What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is David Hamlin, aka The Laptop Legend, and in today's video, I'm doing the much requested tutorial on Schwab Street Smart Pro. And I just started using this platform this month on the 1st of April, uh, but I was able to make $30,000 this month trading on this new platform. So I am definitely not an expert, 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 but I've learned a lot of really cool things about this and I wanted to do a tutorial for those of you who are considering switching to Sp <laughs> What are you doing? Ah, for those of you who are considering switching to Schwab because it honestly is a brokerage that has a lot of really great features if you are trading OTCs a lot like I am. It's the only other one that's one of the big four that has zero commission OTC trades, but they have a lot better short locates for shorting OTCs. So they really are a pretty good option, especially if you are under the PDT rule. So in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how I have my Schwab Street Smart Pro set up and hopefully this will allow you guys to make a whole lot more money by being more efficient when you're trading. So let's dive into that now. And uh, I think she's gonna take this tutorial there, right? Yep, for sure. <laughs> okay, see you guys. Sit. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, take it away. Let's get this tutorial rolling. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right, she's, she's gonna head out now, guys. Um, all right, so the first thing that I wanna show you guys is this little tab page right here. And uh, this allows me to basically have every single thing at once and you can switch easily back and forth between different layouts. So you can see they have the trade, account, screen, slash research, and then my David one. And this is the one that I already have set up for, I guess it's this is my, my platform that I use all the time. But for the purposes of this video, I created a new one. To do that, you just click on this little plus right here. But we're gonna stick in this test and uh, this is for this video. And I'm gonna build my exact layout from scratch so you guys can do it yourself and basically just follow along with this video. Um, also, something that you should know is that I actually have this across two full desktop screens, but whenever I record, it's really low quality, so I'm basically just gonna do the more important side. The other side is kinda just a duplicate of it, and I will explain that later. So keep that in mind. If you have multiple desktop screens, it's gonna be a little bit wider. You're gonna have more charts on there, but it's still the same general idea. So. All right, so now let's let's get rid of this blank area, man. Let's let's get some interesting stuff in here. So here is where you go if you want to launch uh, your tools and get everything set up. And there's actually only a few that I really like to use. Um, but let me just let me put them out here so you guys can you can basically see what they are. So the number one most important thing uh, is going to be this all-in-one trading tool. And this is very similar to the directed trading window on Fidelity. If you've been using that before, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But basically what it is, is it has the three main things built in. It has your order placing window. And uh, you can see that, you know, right here, you can uh, type in buy, you can type in sell, you can type in short, etc. You put the quantity here. And uh, whether you want it to be a limit, market, stop limit, uh, stop, etc. trailing stop, all that stuff is great limit price, et cetera. You can specify conditions. Um, you can put brackets on the order, et cetera. There's a lot of cool things. You can actually save it for later. You can put conditional orders. There's a lot of different things that you can do in here. Um, but mainly I'm just, you know, I'm buying, I'm selling. I'm either doing market or I'm doing limit orders or occasionally, you know, a stop. And uh, that's pretty much all I'm doing with, uh, with this. So it's very helpful to have this right here right next to this level two and the time and sales. And uh, obviously there's no time and sales. There's no prints going through right now. So uh, this is completely blank. But during the day, uh, every single trade that is made is gonna show up here in real time. And it is super, super helpful to have that, you know, right under where you're placing an order and having the level two right next to it is, uh, is just a great pro. And that's exactly how I had it set up on Fidelity. And I have it set up the exact same way on Schwab. And this really allows you to make those, those fast paced trading decisions whether or not you want to type in an order is based on what you're seeing on time and sales and uh, on this a lot of the times. So I definitely recommend having this set up here. And if you have a two desktop Schwab window, what I recommend doing is putting one of these on each of those. Um, but you know, I guess I can't really show that uh, within this screen recorder, but essentially, you know, just imagine this page duplicated. You're gonna put another one of these over on the other side. So keep that in mind. So this is probably the most important thing. And then what I like to put next is I like to put several charts. So you can see here, this is just one of the charts that was spiking up the other day. And uh, you can align it however you want. Um, I kind of like to make it a little bit even if I can. So you can see this, this Vino chart is here. 
And uh, the same thing that you do on Schwab is the same thing that you do on Fidelity if you want to link these. So how you do that is you go up here and uh, you give them a certain color. You give them a certain symbol. So if I want whatever ticker I type in here to also show up here, then I got to make sure they're linked. So you can see right now, they are linked with the same. This is a little square, an orange square. So if I type in, uh, I don't know, uh, HMBL here, it's also going to change the chart to HMBL. But you can see if I change this to the star and I change this to, uh, I don't know, AAPL, it's not going to change this because they're not synced, if that makes sense. So always make sure that uh, these are synced correctly because the worst thing that you can do is be looking at a chart and uh, you're thinking, all right, man, I got to buy right here but it's not synced and then you place an order, but it's for a different ticker. There is nothing worse than doing that. I guess there's a lot of things worse, but you know what I'm saying? It, it's very frustrating to do that. So make sure that these are linked and uh, you know, make sure they're not linked to the same thing as if you have another one set up over here. So I think in this case, I have this square and then the one on the other side, I do have the, uh, the, uh, the star. So keep that in mind, guys. Very helpful to have that. You can also change the, uh, the different charts here. So you can, if you want to have a one year daily, um, you can change this and then make this, okay, I want this to be the, uh, the intraday chart. I can zoom in a little bit, I can zoom out, I can see all this different stuff. Um, so it's pretty helpful to have that, honestly. You can change the overlay period. So uh, say I want this to be the intraday. All right, I'm going, I'm going one minute intraday, and you can see that's the one minute candles, but then I want this to be the daily chart uh, just so I can see the big picture and I can easily flip back and forth between them. So now this is the daily chart overall, you know, going back as far as I want. And this is the intraday chart. Also, something about Schwab is that literally just by zooming in and out, you zoom in and out on the chart. So it can be kind of helpful. It can also be a little bit annoying if you want to pick a specific section. Uh, but, you know, it is how it is, man. It is how it is, and that's just the way that it works. So keep that in mind. Something else that's cool when you have, uh, when you have these particular charts set up is the fact that, um, let me actually go here so you guys can see, MDMP. So you guys can see when you have a position in a stock, it'll actually draw a line and uh, show you where your entry was. And uh, based on the chart, you'll be able to know like how positive you are in that position. So I actually have a position open right now. This is my swing position on MDMP. I got in at uh, you know around a 15 cent average. It was actually, I think 15.2 cents. And you can see right now it draws a line on the chart where my entry was and uh, it says I'm up $66. So it's just kind of cool. This works better on stocks that are in the dollar range. I think it gets confused when it's an interval that's lower than a cent. So it just rounds 15.2 cents down to 15 cents, which when you're trading tens of thousands of shares, it actually makes a difference. But if you're trading like dollar range stocks, it's really cool to see where your entry was on the chart. Uh, and I feel like it makes it, it makes it helpful. It makes it really helpful. You can also, uh, you know, again, see how much profit you have on that current position. And uh, I really like that. I think it's pretty cool. So that is one helpful feature of these charts. A couple other things that I do like having in here is the fact that you can, you can drag this down, make it a little smaller, but something else you're going to want to have are a few studies. So the number one thing you've got to have for sure is volume, guys. They don't have volume defaulted on there, so you, you're going to want to put that on there. And uh, I just leave these the default. You know, up volume is, is green, down volume is red. Okay, and now you can see the volume. Again, this is probably the most important thing to have. Um, you can choose how far you want to drag it. I, I tend to keep it around in this area uh, just because I don't want to have it take up too much space of the chart. But at the same time, you know, I also need to have it not be like this because then the huge volume there's barely a difference so you know you got to give it enough room but don't give it too much room if that makes sense so i think this is kind of a good compromise like right in this area and uh this is what you want to want to have it look like and then the last thing that i personally put on there is uh is vwap volume weighted average price they actually do let that come up on the chart unlike uh fidelity so that is nice and uh you can see here you know this is this is what it's like having vwap and again this is a very helpful helpful tool to have when you are when you are trading these stocks um so you can see you know when it bounces perfectly off of vwap look at that stock bounce perfectly off of vwap it's nice to have that that number and know where that is uh so it's nice to have it on the chart so those are the two main things. I have volume and I have VWAP. And again, to add those, you just go here and uh, you add a study and you type in the study name and you can easily, you know, get rid of it just by checking these boxes. And there's a lot of different customizable things you can do on here. You know, you can change these candlesticks, make them, make them hollow, make them solid. You can make it a, a stupid bar graph if you want, but uh, a line graph, I guess, if you wanted. I don't know why you would do that. Candlesticks are absolutely the move. Um, there's a couple other things you can do. You know, you can draw support lines, resistance lines, etc. Um, it's it's pretty straightforward. 
you know, if you want to put a line in there, great, that's where it bounced off of. Okay, that's something that I want to have. So just cool to know that. And then one last thing that I want to tell you guys about is, uh, let me see if I can find a stock where we had this issue. Um, yeah, so let's say, let's say right here. I'm trying to I'm trying to see this this right here. So you can actually do something where you right click on the chart and you can edit the tick data. And this is so incredibly helpful when there is a misprint on the chart because it's going to allow you to see what the actual chart data is. Uh, because sometimes you'll have a stock that literally prints like way below what the actual price is, and it's not a real tick. It's not a real trade that went through there. So you can actually go in and edit the tick data. So literally for right here. Yeah, so you can see here printed all the way down at nine cents. And I don't think that's true. I really don't think that's true. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in. Uh you know, let's let's call it let's call it 10.5. Okay? 10.5. Let's call it 10.5. I can actually edit the chart, which is so cool. So I hit save here, and now look at that. It just changed it. So this is incredibly, incredibly helpful if you ever need to get rid of erroneous data on the chart that is messing up the scale. Because again, sometimes like it's zoomed in like this. Okay, the chart goes from 12.6 all the way down to 11.8 and you'll have a print down at like eight cents. So the entire chart is like super zoomed out and you can't even see like those little movements that actually make a big deal of difference. So I definitely recommend uh, using that whenever you need to. So in my setup, I like having several charts so I don't miss stuff. Um, again, I'll throw like two or three more charts on there. I usually don't put volume on the other charts. Um, I unlink them so that they're, you know, they're a different one because I, I want to be able, be able to have different charts. So I might put, uh, I might put one here. And again, I prefer to have those intraday charts. So to change that, you go here, switch it, go to one minute or five minute, whatever you like. You can put the zoom, whatever you like, and, uh, you know, get rid of that. And then I'll, I'll put another one, man. I'll put another one. So I'll go in here, I'll launch another tool, and uh, I'll, I'll get another chart. I don't like missing these stocks. I, I want to make sure I catch all these moves whenever they happen. So you can put in another one like this, zoom out, do the same thing, switch this, make it a, I don't know, make it a square, type in a new ticker, AITX. All right, that's perfect. Zoom out on this. Go here, switch this to the one minute candlestick, and voila, this is what you want to have. So this is this is how I like having my charts personally. You know, you can make them bigger if you want, you can make them smaller, however many you need to fit. Uh, you can figure out what the best way to do this is for you. You know, maybe maybe it's better to have this other chart be a little bit bigger. You know, maybe you maybe you want this thing to, to be a little bit larger, you want to have more size like that, you want to have more room on your time and sales in level two. All right, drag that down a little bit. You know, whatever you need to do to make it worth your while, that is perfectly all right with me. So these are the main things you know if you can fit more charts go for it if you can't okay don't it's fine but this is kind of the main things that I like having set up here and then the last couple of things that you absolutely need to have are uh, are right here so the next thing I guess I want to go into is uh, let's see what's probably the most important thing I would say uh, let's go to the account details just so you can see here so I'm gonna put this down here and uh, you can see there's several different things that are important to have here so this is the order status page and uh, this is just one of the many tabs that I you absolutely need to have. So in this order status page, you can see it has every single order uh, that I placed on this account. So you can see when I buy these, when I sell these, etc. Uh, what the quantity is, what the price was that I was filled at, and I like switching up these a little bit. I like having uh, I like having the status to know if I'm filled, partially filled, etc. I like having the symbol, uh, but then I like putting this, you know, right here. I like having. Uh, at least, at least I, I, you need to be able to see this. You really need to be able to see this. So I think I think this is kind of a good order to have it at. Um, so you can see the quantity, you can see the price, and you can see what you were actually filled at. And uh, you can make it smaller than that. You know, you don't you don't really need any more than that. So you can put this here. You can put this below. I personally like to put it below. So I like to put it like that. You know, you can make these again smaller so you can fill everything if you need to. You don't really need trade type in there. That's pretty stupid. Uh, so you can see, you know, now everything fits pretty darn well. And uh, this is just one of the things that you want to have on there. So the next thing you want to have is actually in the same exact thing. So you want to go to launch tools again, and you want to go to account details again. So I put this down here again, uh, but now what I want to do is I want to have this positions tab. And uh, this is very helpful because this allows you to see what positions 
you currently have. And again, you can see I have my MDMP, 20,000 MDMP. Uh, and there's a couple things you can put on here. You know, you can, you can see the P&L. You can edit all these columns. Um, it's pretty, pretty easy to edit the columns. You go to columns and settings. After you right click, you can put whatever you want in there. Uh, set up whatever order you want. If I wanted to have uh, the news, I could put it on there. I could drag it up here, see if there's something, etc. cetera. Uh, but I, I personally prefer just having this set up. You know, I, I like to see the, the position dollar size, the cost per share, the quantity, the current price, the PL, all that stuff. And this is very helpful to have, you know, right here, just when you're trading, so you know what shares you currently have. And something that you need to keep in mind is when you're trading actively, especially in the morning, this can be a little bit delayed. So there's times where I'll place an order right at market open. I'll get filled pretty much instantly, but it won't tell me I'm filled and it won't have the position show up here for another 30 seconds. And if I try to sell the position before it shows up here, it won't let me. So you got to keep that in mind, especially if you're trading really fast moving stocks. And uh, honestly, this is this is the main important thing you want to have for your setup. The annoying thing about uh, about this is there's no great way on Schwab that I have found of having a closed P&L at the end of the day per, per position. There's no way to do it. So if you trade the same stock over and over, you know, 50 times in a day like I do, every single time you trade it, it'll show you your P&L for that trade, but it doesn't add them up automatically for you. So if you go to the realize gain and loss section, uh, I guess there's none from today, um, but you can see, I guess you can't see, but when I go to this, it, it, it doesn't let me. And maybe I can do it here, but I, I doubt it. Uh, yeah, so there, there's no way to do that. There's no way to do that, which is very frustrating for me. And uh, this is one thing that I do not like about Schwab at all. I like knowing at the end of the day how much I made per ticker, and there's no way of knowing that. There's no way of knowing that here. So uh, you just kind of gotta, you kind of gotta make your best guess. And it's a little bit frustrating. I don't even know if there's a way to know that at the end of the year, go online and see that based on a ticker basis. So this could be a little difficult if you are potentially having those uh, those wash sales. So you gotta be careful, especially towards the end of the year on that. Um, so that's that's pretty much my setup here. The last thing you need to, to keep in mind and, and uh, you gotta keep, I guess, in focus when you're looking at it is this thing right here. So you can see the total account value. Um, this is how much money you have total in your account. This is my cash only account. Uh, my other account has like 58,000 uh, right now, which I, Again, I built that up from like 29,000 um, uh, at the beginning of the month. And you can see today's change is zero. This is gonna adjust based on your total change on the day. I don't like the fact that they mesh all of that together. So if you have unrealized gains or unrealized losses, that goes right here in the today's change section. If you have realized gains, realized losses, that also goes there. So if you have like a swing position, that is down 2,000 bucks on the day, but you've made $1,000 day trading that day, it's gonna say negative 1,000 on today's change, even though you've been doing a good job trading in your swing position, you know, you might need to let it let it do its work before it goes up. So it's, that, that's kind of annoying, and I wish there were a good way of, uh, of getting around this, but there's not that I know of. Um, this, available to withdraw, this is helpful to have. You can get rid of whatever of these columns you need. You can also, you know, right click here, and uh, I guess you can put, okay, I guess that makes sense. You can see today's net realized P&L. Uh, I guess that makes sense. I never knew that. I guess, <laughs> wow, I guess you learn something new every day. So apparently there is a way to do this and that's pretty cool. So you can see today's net realized p &L. I guess I could put that there instead of today's change. So that'd be good to have and uh, you could basically choose it. So man, that's uh, that's actually really nice. So I guess you, sh you should have both of those there and that, sh that should solve that problem. So that's actually cool. Uh, the way that I don't like is again the way I can't do it based on the different positions. I wish I knew total for one position on the day how much I've made or lost. Uh, I still don't know how to do that. And if anyone knows and made it to the end of the video, please let me know in a comment down below. But I don't think there's a way to do that. But it's cool to know that there is a way to see your realized PL and unrealized PL. So that is my street swab, street, I don't even know how to say it, street smart edge swab setup. Golly, that is a tongue twister. Uh, if you made it to the end, I appreciate you. Uh, hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, check out some of my other videos because I make a lot of videos about how I make money trading stocks every day. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the next one. And until then, let's grow better together.